Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our foundation level sample question discussion. This is our next tutorial continuing ahead with the chapter one and talking about some of the remaining questions from this chapter of the set A. The very first question of today's tutorial is chapter question number five. And here is a very small scenario given to you at the foundation level. Sometime team the uh, scenarios are sometimes given to you to just trick you around and help you see your observation level and that would be really crucial for any individual taking up the questions and the examination that how much attention do you really give to the scenario though the scenario is not complex but there will be a lot of information which are not at all required to be read and there will be that simple information which will tell you the exact answer let's look at the question right now Mr. Test has been testing software applications on mobile devices for a period of five years. He has a wealth of experience in testing mobile applications and achieves better results in a shorter time than others. Over several months, Mr. Test did not modify the existing automated test cases and did not create any new test cases as well. This leads to fewer and fewer defects being found by executing the test. Now, what principle of testing did Mr. Test not observe? Now, that's something really more interesting for us to understand that what exactly is all about the scenario. Now, we certainly have, you know, seven principles to understand about and we really need to highlight and talk about that particular interface that what exactly the scenario is talking about. Now, if you see, they're just saying one important thing in this entire scenario that Mr. Test did not modify the existing automated test cases and did not create a new test case. Now, that's the only thing which you need to pick up from this entire sentence or entire scenario. Mobile applications are just a diversion. The experience is just to tell you that don't think about the experience what the person has, but it's just a kind of like being an experienced person, how can you do that, right? But the main intention, the main concept they're talking about here is that he did not modify the test cases and not even add a new test case. Now, all you have to do is start relating all your seven principles that which principle fits this purpose. If you see absence of testing, uh, sorry, testing shows presence of defects. So that's not something which he's doing right now here. Early testing saves your time and money. Exhaustive testing is impossible. We are not trying for multiple combinations and testing it exhaustively right now. No. Uh, defect clustering. No. We are not talking about finding more defects in a particular area, which is close by or related. But when it comes to pesticide paradox, I think this is where we are talking about it. The pesticide paradox tells us that repeating the same test cases again and again over a period of time will not yield you new defects and you might be just wasting your time. So keep consideration on creating new test cases or revising your existing test cases. And that gives us an answer that pesticide paradox is being discussed about. But now look at the trickiness more on the options. Option A says testing depends on the environment. No. It is context dependent. So they have just tried a little bit of modifying principle number six. B, exhaustive testing is not possible. Of course, we just discussed that this is not one of the answers. C, repeating of same test will not find new defects. But you may say that this is something which is very straightforward. So really, do we have to spend so much time? Not for you, but for many others. A lot of people remember only the name of the principles, not the understanding of it. And you would say, Ah, you know what, none of the principles were called like repeating the same test case will not find new defects. I remember something called as defect cluster, pesticide paradox, absence of error is a failure or fallacy, right? So this is where they play around again. So make sure that you just don't remember the principle name, you also remember the details of the principle. So being very straightforward, the right answer here is C repeating of the same test will not yield new defects which relates to the principle pesticide paradox. Moving into the next question here, question number six, in what way can testing be part of quality assurance? Now, quality assurance is something which is really has to be understood and remembered from our past experience. 
If you sell me that quality control and quality assurance, the difference between that, so QA is more of like uh, managing things, defining the parameters, and QC is more of like controlling the activities. So if you generally look into the quality assurance, it really adds more value from the point of defining the parameters, what you really need to have. So here, let's look at the options. So now we got the difference. A, it ensures that the requirements are detailed enough. Now, I think that's something more relevant to the uh, static testing because static testing can help you review the work products. And as a part of reviewing the work products, you would identify if everything is broken down into the understandable format and has any kind of anomalies, inconsistencies, contradictions, and such top type of defects. So I think uh, that's more related to what we do in the static testing. B, testing reduces the risk of poor software quality. Exactly, I think that's more relevant as of now. When you say quality assurance, testing is one of the process which certainly contributes to the overall quality which you achieve as a part of the testing. And by the more you test the system, the that, that percentage is what you reduce from the point of risk, right? Whether you have a risk or not, the better, the more you test the system, the risk will reduce or sometime completely mitigated as well. So yes, quality assurance can define the amount of testing required, which can in turn reduce the risk or level of risk. C, it ensures that the standards in the organizations are followed. Now, I think that's more of like a, a quality assurance, but not in the testing. So this could be even in a product-based organizations like manufacturing units, where we don't do testing, but standards can be followed at any point of time. Even if you talk about airports, they do have quality assurance, but they don't have testing. And if you don't forget, the question is about in what ways can testing be a part of quality assurance? So sometimes they give you very generic options, even an airport, offices, you know, playground areas, apartments, right? Uh, have quality assurance in place, but they don't test. D, it measures the quality of the software in the terms of number of executed test cases. Uh, not exactly, because quality cannot be measured by the number of executed tests. It's more on the outcome, what you really have from those executions. So putting it all together, the right answer here is B, testing reduces the risk of poor software quality. Let's look at the next question here. Question number seven, which of the following activities is part of the main activity test analysis in the test process? Now, this is something again, very important. As you get into the test process, there are several stages of testing and each stage has so many activities to be remembered. A lot of people get confused at this point of time because they get mixed together with several other activities. You just have to keep few things in mind by shortening those points for example, test design includes creation of the test cases, prioritization of the test cases, defining the infrastructure, and so on, right? So you really don't have to buy hard these statements. Rather, you need to keep in mind that what are the key points which you can remember to remind you what activities happen at what point of time. So the thing here is test analysis. The phase which you are talking about is the test analysis. And as a part of this analysis process, what is that which happens inside the process, right? So let's look at the option A, identifying any required infrastructure and tools. I think when you talk about the test analysis, the very first thing which comes into your mind is analyzing the test basis, defining the test conditions. But nobody will pick it up saying that could be infrastructure be a part of the tools uh, and tools be a part of test analysis. Uh, not sure exactly. So if you, in your case you are con confused here, right, then ignore it. The moment you get confused, just ignore because the other options can give you better confidence. So sometime if your knowledge fails to remind you that I'm not sure where exactly it is. So start, you know, pulling out the unwanted options from there. But just for your kind information, infrastructure and tools are the part of the test design. Okay, not the analysis. Right. Let's look at B, creating test suites from the test scripts. I think that's an important keyword for the test implementation, and that happens there. C, analyzing lessons learned from process improvement. 
or for process improvement. That happens during the test completion, which is the last thing to be done. And now we are left with option D, evaluating the test basis for testability and evaluating the test basis, which is analysis. So test analysis certainly consists of this activity. So the right answer here is D, evaluating the test basis for testability. So sometime, you know, your options help you drive that, you know, okay, now I'm left with just two options and I have to decide one. Then of course, without understanding the requirement, how can you pick up infrastructure and tools required for it? So that would happen in test design. So the, you know, D will help you to get the right answer. Taking another question from this particular chapter, which is eight, match the following test work products one to four with the right description one to A to D. Now that's something always difficult for most of us when it comes to match the following. They're just trying to tell you that if you don't know one, then you are done. <laughs> so it's really important for you to at least remember a few of them, because if you don't know any one of them, you are completely clueless. And here you need to start to answer this match the following from the most confident option which you remember. So the very first thing here is to quickly recall that do you remember what exactly you know the process was all about? And for this, you need to know every single phase and all the unique activities or special activities from each of the phases. So say for example, I don't know where does the test suite belongs. Okay, or what test suite is defined as, what a test case is all about, what a test script is all about, what a test shader is all about, right? But at least I would be sure about one thing which I can start with. Say for example, I say test charter. It comes under exploratory testing and they are prepared as a part of the exploratory sessions. And exploratory sessions in terms are also called as session-based exploratory testing. So I'm damn sure right now that four relates to D. And for your kind information, sometimes the options help you. When they are complex, they will give you hints. Now, if you observe the options carefully, we got our right answer already. There is no other option conflicting with four is to D. There's only one option, which is A. So fantastic if you started like that. But if not, what if test charter is something which you don't remember? Let's start with test script. And test script is a set of instruction for the execution of tests. This is more of like the procedures which you create, right, for the execution. And test case, on the other hand, it contains expected result. Your test script does not include expected result. If you are an automation tester already, you know that expected results are provided through assertions or a checkpoint step, which is an additional step over your test scripts right? So sometimes your real-time knowledge adds more value to your preparation. So test script goes to B, test cases go to C. And again, you're left with the one option on the top, test suite, a set of test scripts to be executed in a specific test run. Sometimes you call this test suite as test set also, which is collection of tests put together to be executed in a single run. So putting it together, the right answer is a, 1A, 2C, 3B, and 4D. So fine team, this is where we picked up the eight questions from the chapter one. And uh, just for your kind information, the chapter one will have eight questions in the examination out of 40, all right? The next tutorial will begin with the chapter two questions and we'll pick it up and talk about it in the similar fashion. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have <coughs> anything else? Feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.